The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Wednesday, the 17th of August. This is the 8.06 a.m. edition. It will be replayed at 10.06. Uh, I'm just going to make it at that time. So we're looking at the Dow futures. Well, the Dow closed yesterday at uh, 34,152. The futures now are down some, a little bit better than they were earlier on, but they're down 193 at 33,925. So as I'm looking at this, I have a possibility of a Chapman Wave alternate count, but this is exactly where the on-balance volume is suggesting that there should be some kind of a pullback. So it's really important, as far as I'm concerned, that uh, we take a little bit money, money money off the table in a number of positions that we have that have had really good gains. And even with new positions, uh, just a little bit of moderation. In fact, uh, Dave White always says, uh, take profits while you can, not when you have to. So uh, I love that expression, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Most importantly, what we're looking at is I don't have a sell signal at all yet because the Dow just made it. <laughs> I had expected that the 30, uh, where are we? the 33,900 would become a very strong resistance area. Well, it was for a couple of days, and then all of a sudden, whoop, in the first hour of trading yesterday, it spiked up to the 34,000 level. It actually went to 34,281. And uh, that's really important because these millennial uh, areas, millennium areas, are very important as far as I'm concerned. Of all the years, I've watched 6,000, 7,000, whatever it is. And uh, usually there's a little bit of a struggle. And if the market slices through with two follow ups, that set, that 1,000 level, whatever it is, um, that's usually a very good sign because it means that now it's not being a repellent, it's a, an attractor. It means that at some point the price wants to go back. So it's really important that we did get to the 34,000s. I wouldn't be surprised over the next week or so that there's some testing of the 33,000 level, 32,800 even. Um, that would be fine. So just in terms of money management, because we've had some really big, big uh, gains, uh, it's just we keep taking just tad, a little tad off means that between 8 and 12 percent of the original position you're taking off. So you could take it off three, four times and you still have a very good core position. That's where we are. Looking at the S&P, so the S&P yesterday closed also a new recovery high at 43.25. I just need to double check that. 40, yep, uh, 43.25 at 28. And the futures, this is the continuous contract of the E-mini. The futures are down 33 at 42.74 right now. And you can see, uh, based on everything we're looking at, that two, actually, I showed this to subscribers this morning. Let me go there now and let's see what happens with the S&P. So you see, this is a Chapman Wave uh, automated support and resistance lines. This is the daily chart. So the S&P, the Dow, let's just go back to the Dow because you need to see this. The Dow stalled just above the 33,917 level. But you can see every time since, I think it was late January, yes, yeah, since January, every time that the Dow has gone above the 200 period moving average, it got repelled. The difference now, the reason why I didn't want to get everything off, I just wanted to have some money management here, is that within the context, let me just get this shorter here. In the context of movement, look how long this buy mode has been. And we've been, we bought it from the very low, on the doji low. Uh, we've been buying the Dow, uh, diamonds. Uh, look at this. This is the longest you've had, in, certainly in price and in time. So I'm anticipating something is a little different here, and that's why this whole area of 33,183, the 200-period moving average, is going to be significant for the rest of August. I'd love if we can go further. If we can get to 34,300s, all of a sudden you're looking at something very, very different. So within that context, look, there's a beautiful, there was a cup formation right there. There's a, a, a time-wise, look, we've got almost an exact 
number of bars on the left to the number of bars on the right. Remember, I love to look at that. I don't like to draw on this chart, but I'll do it because it's pretty much a naked chart. We've only just gone above the, the Chapman Wave uh, inside track repellent zone. I'm not going to put two, two, bar, two, two lines in here. It's just above it. So this is, at this particular moment, yes, the market could go up. I don't mind at all. But this is also a prudent time to be taking something off. Now we can go to the S&P. Look at the S&P. It's broken above the 4265 uh, resistance. Uh, 4360 is next. Wow, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, 4360, but 4305 right now. And it's pulled back in the E-mini. Let's go to the E-mini, ES. Look at that. Just pulled back a little bit. That has 4242. That was resistance, and that's going to be support. Look at the QQQ. Uh, right in a cluster of resistance levels, just barely over the 200 period moving average. And this just says, hey, Prudence says, take a little money off. We had fantastic gains. We have three times long. I, I almost got rid of one of our positions completely. And then I said, you know what? Just put the stop in. They're still buying. Buy the dips has been the mentality. We've got the Fed speed. Oh, well, Fed book comes out today at 2 o'clock. Don't over-anticipate. Let me go back to my original charts right here. So this is the QQQ, a little doji candle yesterday with a high of 334.42. Three, three, uh, yep, that was the high. And we're trading right now 329.64. That's just five points lower. Not a big deal. But the 200 pre moving average of 327 is going to become an, an inflection point or a deflection point. We'll be watching it. IWM, the Russell 2000, small caps, doing very nicely. 201.99 was the high. A little doji candle there. It just says, yeah, just be a little careful right here. Now let's go to gold. Uh, gold is, in fact, down again, $5 at 1784 And let's see what, what silver is doing. Silver, this is now the 8.13 uh, a.m. time frame. I'm not sure what will be at 10. But I'm just about to put a down arrow in silver because it's made a peak F and it's underneath for the third time in three days. It's been underneath the 14-period um, moving average which is really a very important level to be watching. But the green is still, the 9 is still positive above the 14. And you can see the resistance here in the weekly. So this is just saying uh, silver is not doing that well. High-grade copper is holding nicely at on the 200-period moving average, actually on the 9. Uh, holding okay. We're looking at the dollar, DXY. A dollar is holding very nicely up 28 ticks at 106.75. I mean, that might be another reason why there's a little bit of a dip today, but it actually it should be helping the multinationals. Um, we're still long from way back. Uh, the dollar, I'm not going to be doing anything with that right now. Looking at the EUR, USD, the euro dollar currency pair, peak C pulling back very sharply from that. Uh, not looking all that great. I haven't even looked at the USD JPY for a few days. Just didn't need to. Oh, look at that peak A, peak B. And now we're going to see, does it make a peak this is still a gray peak B because the MACD has only just turned positive and the stochastic's way down at 50%. But if the euro, which uh, the yen, which is at 135.14 uh, right now, can it doesn't have to close. It just has to go 135.569, and that will be a leg C. Uh, and the weekly chart says, yep, consolidation, just like we've been expecting in the dollar and the, and the uh, yen, just a consolidation here. Whether or not over the next four weeks or so you start to see under one th of trade under 130 or. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in the Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro dollar, Pound dollar, Aussie dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, we're back. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't even hear the uh, ad, the ad coming up, so I talked right through it. But let me just go back. I was looking at crude oil, and crude oil has a left side, right side price time match. And that time match says that the low that was made on the 11th of April at 84.35. Today is the day that it should test it. It's so close that today's low is 85.88. I mean, really. So that's uh, in, in the left side, right side price time match on the daily. But look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart has this pattern that we call the dreaded H. It makes a, a sharp move down and then it has a rally back towards the previous high and then it fails. And now it's got the inverted. It looks like the Eiffel Tower, or it actually looks like the Egyptian pyramid. Goes straight up diagonally and then straight down diagonally. And that means it's, it's testing. If this base at any point between now and I'd say the first week of September, let me see if I can get that actually right there. Yeah, if at any point in that in this particular time, uh, we start to see trades underneath. Let's go all the way to the left side low after that flagpole reversal and 83.62 on the continuous contract. And that was back uh, the week of 18th of March of this year. If that is taken out on a weekly basis, wow. That just says crude oil uh, really is under severe pressure. And that's gonna, and that should be a good thing. That should be a good thing for the IYT. Look, the IYT uh, gone to an alternate count, G slash C, uh, 249.68 in the Chapman Wave Daily, leg B in the uh, leg B in the weekly, and we'll have to see what happens after this. So a question came up: uh, Is there left side, right side price time match in Sava? And so Sava is Cassava. There we go. This is. Oh, I used to have that all written in. What happened? Oh, I can't stand it when this happens. Oh, SVA. Of course, I don't have any SVA notated, but I do have SAVA. You'll see cassava. There it is. Cassava Sciences, Biotech, Alzheimer's. Well, it's one of the things that they do. Had a high of 146.16 July of 2021. Had a little bit of a dip. Went all the way down to 14 just recently, and now it's trading at 20. Well, 14 to 26 points. Oh, that's a that's a pretty decent uh, rally. And now what we're doing is we're stalling. So as I see it, so if you want to look at the arch formation, because it's filled in the gap completely. That's the gap that was in Sava 
uh, trading at 24.23, up four, pre-market, very nice. Uh, because it's filled in, the gap from the 26th, the low was 21. The low was 20.75, and the very next session, the high was 19, round number 19. Then it plopped down that same session. It plopped down to 13.84. This is, uh, I mean, six points, uh, very good. It's, uh, you know, over 50% gain. Now what we were looking at is because it's popped up to 24, now what you've got is a rectangle formation that suggests, and this is a company that evidently has something very good going on, but it keeps getting hit with short sellers and stories come out. And then I'm not 100% sure, but it seems to me very often those stories are not necessarily completely refuted, but there's a big question mark whether or not uh, the validity of the dissension of their uh, product analysis uh, is valid and that seems to be the way it trades so if it's trading right now pre-market 24 22 when the market opens at 9 30 if it's anywhere in the 24s it says that the target could be the high that was made on the 20th of uh, july of 2555 and that would be a leg d and that's where you could start to pull back again then at any point because it has such a whippy action if it starts to close any day it closes under 20 in the next uh week or two after that, because it moves very sharply up and down. It says, watch out, it could even retest the low. But the way it's acting now with the technicals improving, this is going to improve them even more. I would suggest to you that if it does trade at 24, the entire week should see 22 as key support level. It should it'd probably hold there. All right, next thing we want to look at now. So the Dow futures at this particular point, look, the YM is down 250. So for the diamonds, I recommended for subscribers this morning to my opening call newsletter because we've been long for a long time. Um, that you take another, it'll be, I think, either the second or the third, a little bit off we're taking right now. And uh, one of the reasons is, you're in an alternate count because this, the, in the, not in the Dow, but there's a chance it could be F slash C, so it pulls back and it makes one nominal new high, and then you start to see a deeper pullback. That's kind of what I'm thinking. If you look at the S&P, uh, let's go to the E-mini. This is going to be the continuous contract of the E-mini, trading at 42.72, the same as the uh, September contract, but that'll change at some point as it gets close to closer to the monthly expiration you get weird differences but sometimes seven points or four points so i'm just using this for the moment because i've got this notated in, in all the different time frames because it's a continuous contract and that just says with the almost doji candle yesterday in the uh, e mini futures the MAGD is good, stochastics excellent at 94%. The on balance volume, for some reason, it's lagging. Not the Dow, but in the S&P, it's been lagging. That's a concern. But most importantly, the 43.2750 high yesterday, I think you could go, if there's, let's just say the Fed comes out. Mark is really weak, and then as we get it from 12 o'clock to, so from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock, the market just kind of comes back and it's not as down down as sharply as it was. And then all of a sudden, the Fed says, mm, we're going to stick with the 50 to 75 uh, uh, basis points move. And then all of a sudden, the market might turn around and say, oh, went, uh, let's take a breather. So I just think this is a good, an appropriate time to be. And also, I think that we, we're in the process right now, perhaps, we don't know, but perhaps we're in the process of seeing some rotation into some stocks that are, are important to the economy in various ways, maybe through uh, um, uh, office space, whatever it is. And because of that, you could see money just start to flow slowly into those areas. And that means if you take a breather in some of the stocks that have done fantastically, that'll be fine. All right, let me, a couple of questions came in. Microsoft, Microsoft's trading at, um, 289 down three, uh, an, an alternate account, G slash C. Here again, look, uh, Chapwave instant restart occurs after a peak D. Within three bars, you make a new recovery high, and that means you can have an alternate count. So you continue the count in the alphabet, A, B, C, D, F, G, never an H. But when you get to G, you say G probably 
slash C because there could be a pullback and then a little pop to a D and then maybe you have a deeper pullback. But if you look at the, say, the SPY, uh, the SPY is in an F. Now, that is an instant restart as well. Look, you went to D and then with your three bars, you made that new high high. So this says this is an F, but there's a chance that it's an F slash B. Look at the QQQ. You say, yep, that's a G. But there's a chance that this is an instant restart and it's going to G slash C. Look at the SMHs. They have made D. What's the objective in the Chapman wave? To get you to at least a D and then other things can happen. So we're down three on the SMHs. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, early edition. It'll be recorded and played back at 10. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Back. I was asked about MTR, which is New Bean Limited. New Bean Limited, I, 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 I believe that that is, is that really a bond fund? Um, they have REITs in, uh, in it, but I do like the chart. It's at a peak C right now, and there's a particular pattern that I always look at, Chapway Falling Axe Formation, and if it's very quick, it happens within a couple of bars, or it could take a long time. But in this case, there's a chance that it's gone to a peak C and it could pop above. Oh, it's down 45 cents today at 91. But all it needs to do is pop above 92.71 by one penny and it makes leg D. So that's then, then it could be in for a bit of a, a, a reprieve, a little kind of a pullback. But actually, this has gone far above the 200 period moving average of 83. And that makes the 87s very good support. But from the weekly chart, it's just been a steady move up. It's broken above Chapman Wave inside track uh, resistance. 
It's always got a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. I would say this targets the 92 to 93 area, and then you better be a little careful. But that so far it's good. And as a um, uh, let's see where are we uh, can we discuss. Uh, yes. So okay, that was the question. I'm just I'm doing the analysis for it. Question here is: Belza, can we discuss shop? Hmm. Didn't really want to discuss shop, <laughs> but if you ask for it, I have to do it. Shop is Shopify. Um, it's trading at 38.64. We're actually long from 40.49 on the 11th of August. And yesterday, our stop, I, I've got a, a little wider stop than usual, but I did say to take a tad off at the open today just to ameliorate some of the downside action. And one of the things I've been looking at here is I was talking about it earlier on and expect to be asked about Shopify. And uh, Shopify trading right now, 38.64, puts it right back into the middle of this rectangle between 42 and 30. And it's been there, well, it actually went to 29.72. And it's been there for months. It's been there since the 5th of, uh, was that May or June? 5th of May. It's been, so 42.49, it gapped down, and then it's just been stuck in this range. But it did pop to 45.43 the other day. And we wanted it um, that day, but I wasn't even prepared to pay any gap up. So we bought it on the, on the sharp dip. It went to 45.43. I thought, great, if we're getting it at about 40, in this case, 40.49, we are over 10% off the high. So it gives me a little bit of room. And the only reason, and this is the thinking, you may as well know the thinking. The thinking is that because we've got, I, I said weeks and weeks ago that we're going to be, a, for subscribers to my opening call, we're going to be aggressive about what I think is going to work. We won't just buy one to one, we'll buy three to one positions. That means 300% long if we can get them in any particular ETF. And we're going to just keep taking a little bit of money off, a little bit of money off. And as it realizes, well, our best uh, best move would have been almost 50% yesterday on, on one of the positions. But I, I want the cause of those particular things. And then I said, when there is a, 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 a some kind of a, a bigger consolidation rather than a one day or a half a day or a three day consolidation in those areas that we are long, aggressively long. Um, I want to start looking at others, other sectors, sectors that have been under just, I mean, Shopify, this is the post split at 176. It was 3,000 something at one point. So it's now 176 split. In, I don't know what it was. 20 to 1 or something, and it goes down to 29. I mean, that is a whopper of a move down. So now I'm thinking that in the rotation, if we start to see a pullback, which I'm anticipating is, is almost underway here as we're talking, then it means there's now, from this moment on, there's limited upside. There could be more upside, but kind of limited. But most importantly, fund managers are going to have to look for other areas. So my thinking here is that Shopify has had this, um, so that was May the 5th, let's call it all of May. May, June, July, August, a f almost a four-month consolidation in the narrowest range. You know what I always say about the rectangle formation at the top? If it pops up usually to a D and then starts to pull back and breaks halfway into the re narrow rectangle midpoint, there's a real good chance it's going to test the base. And if it tests the base, there's a real good chance from that moment on that it goes under it before it tries to get back into the rectangle. This is the exact opposite. This is not a rectangle, narrow rectangle at the top. This is a narrow rectangle at the bottom. And my thinking was this trough E at 2972 on the 5th of July, you see right here um, how it made this base three times hit area. Um, and now there's a chance that you've got a cup, uh, really a bowl, or let's call it a saucer-shaped pattern that says, at this particular point, in fact, I'm even prepared to stretch this out a little bit. We, we could, if we could start to see trades in the 45.80 to 55.60 area in the next week without breaking a certain support level, I would say just... Uh, 35 would be, uh, we, our stop is way tighter than that. I'm just saying on, in the bigger picture, whatever this is right here, uh, 3630. 
if it breaks 36.30 on a closing basis, it, it can go on for a lot longer. But in the meantime, and, and I see Walmart is about to challenge Shopify's uh, uh, particular uh, sector focus. Um, I, the way it's looking right now, let's give it another two days or so, because if it makes a little bit of a U-turn right here, and at any point it can even touch uh, Monday, what's today, Wednesday? Yeah, Monday's high of 41.10. Just nick it. It just has to touch it. All of a sudden, you're looking at something that says a little mini U-turn. So I hope that helps you. It's kind of the position we're in. Uh, falling, uh, falling box of sharp knives. Everyone likes using the product for Tiger Dollars, uh, Frank says. Yeah, you know, in fact, I, I can't even remember specifically what they do. Uh, I have followed it. I know someone who actually had it all the way from the top. Uh, from the uh, from midpoint all the way to the top and then all the way back down again. Um, that's just the way it is. Some, sometimes people just get focused and then they get unfocused. Um, but uh, this is one of those that says to me, if they have, well, let me just in fact check it right now. Uh, what is the time? Yeah, we've got a moment. I'm going to just go here and I'll say, oh, it's right there. Shopping. Shopping. Uh, what does Shopify do? Uh, E-commerce platform for all businesses. Yeah, uh, you know, it's just e-commerce. Uh, Build, customize an online store and sell in multiple places, including web, mobile, in-person, brick and mortar locations, pop-up shops, and across multiple channels for social media and online marketplace. I mean, they had a fantastic product, and I believe still have, but they just they were obviously spending money, and that money was at the wrong time, and now it's pulled back. And I think from everything I hear, it's a great company. And all I'm saying is the timing-wise, this would be the timing as far as I'm concerned, where these laggards that have a good business, a good business model, very good customer relationship, and uh, a customer base, could start to see a movement to the upside. That's all. Okay, so I hope that helps you. Um, SBSW, uh, SBSW, SBSW. Question about that. SBSW is uh, Sabania Stillwater Limited. Am I just reading that incorrectly? Sabania Stillwater Limited. Okay, is this silver or gold? Anyway, whatever it is, um, it's trading at 10.31 at the close yesterday. Now it's down 78 cents at 9.53. Made a peak E. It really has to hold this 9.50 area. If it doesn't, that makes the weekly chart very poor. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. 
The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back. So that same analysis that I did for uh, crude oil, which said today should be the test of that, uh, what was it, 50, uh, oh, on the left side low, um, uh, is what I did last night at 10. I drew this in. There's a Chapman Wave uh, inside wedge target support level uh, i put in this right here and then i did a measurement to the right side and then when i woke up at about 5 36 o'clock this morning i said oh it just made a peak d let's see it was way up there i said i don't know could could you really uh, could you really see a sharp move down and look at this it went right there at exactly 6.30 this morning at 42.78. That was the left side target. Then it went down, and that means that 42.78 level has to become support if there is a nice bounce at any point. And I suspect that the 42.93 level, before the Fed makes a statement to, uh, today, it might, it might even be a test all the way up to that 42.93 uh, uh, level. Now, I for three days, I've been meaning to do this. I apologize to George. XYL, he had sent me a really a nice note about this particular company. Uh, uh, I think it was fri over the weekend or maybe Friday. Xylem Inc., water tech pro provider. Um, this is a public utility and private, also has private, commercial, and agriculture. This is, this is in everything. So this is XYL trading at 103.96 of the close yesterday. Made a new recovery high. Oops, to get rid of that. And that's a leg D. But the MAGD is strong. Stochastic's way at 98% and flat is fabulous. On balance volume says, be careful. There could be a little bit of a pullback. The left side, right side price time match in the XYL weekly chart says you could, you could, you could get a left side midpoint but it actually went lower, so it's a lopsided. Basically, it should be called a lopsided. It's like a gravy cup formation, and even more importantly, it's in a single leg B. I mean, it's in a leg B to the upside, tackling the 106.17 high, which was the target that I had when I drew this up on Sunday, uh, on Monday, looking at it, and then forgot to talk about it. So everything about this says that it is coming up strongly towards a lot of resistance levels in the 106 area. Where would one add? I'm not sure if that was, I can't remember if that was a question. I'd add at any point, I just put in something at between 97, 95, 93 of uh, really key support levels. I just put something in the middle, 95 if you want to add to it, maybe a, a sudden pullback to the 95s. That'll be more than a sudden pullback. It'll be quite a sharp decline. That's the area, but it looks fabulous. And I would love in about three days, about maybe Wednesday, maybe Tuesday of next week, Monday or Tuesday, would be a really good time to see where it is because if it survives, survives over the next three to four sessions, it's going to be absolutely imperative. But water technology provider, this is so important. I love this. We used to have an MWA 
uh, which was the uh, Mueller water products for a long time, made fabulous money. And then we got out and I've never got back in. For some reason, there was something wrong with it. Then I found out here in Newton that they installed meters and they had to redo all the meters. They still haven't actually finished doing the meters uh, because of some error. Um, so th that's different. So this one here is XYL. This is nice action, very good. So yes, it's a great company. Obviously, it must be a very good company, but great chart pattern coming off the low. But the high was 138 and the low was 72, got cut in half. So this is a, a very strong rebound. Treat it right now as the start of an improvement in the weekly and the monthly chart. We can now forget the daily. Now we're looking at the weekly charts like we are in the in the Dow and many of the instruments that we have. The dailies are now, they've completed everything they need to do. Now we move to the next time frame. That's what I was teaching in my webinar on Wednesday, so last Wednesday. You can actually get it if you become a subscriber. Uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if you purchase it, you'll be able to look at it as many times as you want. It's really relevant to uh, the markets we're in, the market conditions we're in. So yes, next question was, could I look at Amazon? Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Yeah, Amazon recycled with a Chapel Wave instant restart. And you can see how choppy it can be, either straight up or you become really choppy. This actually has the look of a Chapman Wave. Um, I'll mention it. It's a, it has the look of a Chapman Wave unconventional restart. All right, all right, all right. Just a lot of words, but the words actually explain everything that it is and it means that it can keep chopper, chopping around, but it looks like it keeps wanting to come back to the area of the instant restart low. And if that's the case, then no matter how high Amazon goes, at some point it's going to retest the 132 area. And here it is at 143, it's down at $1.38 pre market. So that's the way I would look at that pattern. And this kind of corresponds to so many things that we're looking at. Look at this. Uh, pops up over the um, A, B, C, and fails at peak C back in April. Uh, just above the 200 period moving average, it's there for about uh, 10 sessions, and then whoop, gone down, and you don't see it again from the 157 level until it tests the 100 level. And look at this. Uh, this is, this is <laughs> oh, look at that. It's a little bit like the Shopify pattern. Look, a long rectangle. This is from May. And then finally it breaks out, but it gaps up. And that's the difference. Shopify hasn't done that yet. It's still under pressure. So this is the same kind of pattern where it just goes sideways, sideways, sideways at the bottom and then uses the low that was made in case, this case, the low of, I think it was the low of uh, June the, it's a daily, yeah, June the 14th of 101.43. And here it is at 144. So we're looking at a 40% gain. That's a huge gain. Of course, this is a stock that was once 188.65 in July of 2021. So coming down to the 100 level, that's a, that's a big hit. Well, yeah. Well, it's 80, po yeah, 80 points. Okay. So that's uh, Amazon. Let's look at what was Oh, I had them all written down. Schwab. Yes. So Schwab made a huge move up to leg. Even pre-market, it's up a few cents. This is the area we, we, we wanted it because we are along the IAI, and I've loved the action. And I said it's absolutely imperative that the brokerage sector, the IAI, and the XLF, together with certain other areas, that we, as well as the semiconductors, had to have a decent rally uh, off the low in June because that would be a, a confirmation that, seven, three, seven, that's a leg B in the weekly chart, that would be a confirmation that you have sustainability. That's why this is more an intermediate term move from the June uh, to six weeks or more. And that's really important. And what I'm really looking at here is that the XLF, so let me just finish this up. So Schwab is a little extended above the, 200 period moving average of 72 is five points higher. So it, could, it actually it doesn't even have to get back to 72. But if it digests gains over the next two weeks, um, I'm watching it closely because it could should it could start a peak B by having a lower high at some point and then start a C. And that'll say it's the first time in months that it's trying to attack the uh, Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone back in the. Uh, well, it depends on which month you're looking at it. Right now, it would be up in the 78, 80 area. So that's important. XLF is the financials. 
And we do have, we're taking a little bit, of, uh, first time we're taking a little bit off our bank stock that we've got, our long bank stock. Yeah, look how many Ds and Es and Fs there are. And this just says to me, hey, this is normally we get forces, but we haven't actually chosen a short position yet. We've still got longs, but we're just raising some cash. I think it's important. But very good action in the financials. I'll be back. One more section to go. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv well folks in this final segment remember this is going to be repeated uh, at 10 o'clock so i uh, think everything i'm doing now is pre uh, pre open the dow's down 230 in the futures this big future is down 38. I'm expecting some weakness. And even if whatever the Fed says, I think now we have limited upside in the shorter term. I think the intermediate term targets that we had on the upside, you've got leg D, E, and F, and all the different things. Look, I'm even looking at natural gas, leg D. I did a left side, right side price, time match. Now, this is so important because this shows Chapman Wave techniques and a left side, right side, then a pullback. And now it's gone to a higher high at 9.48 uh, on the uh, continuous contract. But look, what happened uh, and the reason why we have a natural gas company of uh, uh, actual oil and gas companies because I thought that this v-shaped pattern for the um, weekly chart if it takes out the left side high I have to consider this is an a and a B, a brand new leg B in the weekly chart and a leg D in the monthly chart so as this says natural gas is in play it's in play and I like it very much I don't like the action of crude oil uh, it might not go very far on the downside, but it's already at the target that we had for the left side, right side price time match that I've had forever. I mean, just for ages. I just did that. Look, there it is. That's the low that was made back in April in the 80, 85. 
5.30 area, and here we are. We're at 86, we hit 85 already today. I, I think this is a problem. I think oil can bounce a little bit, but I think it's going to make uh, lower lows and lower highs with the 200-period moving average at 87.81. Really, it's like a magnet at this particular point. So to sum up, much more cautious. We've gone really cautious. We're still long, haven't started shorts yet, but considering it, and at the same time, um, just looking to see how this plays out into the Friday close. Uh, number one. Number two is uh, within the context of um, taking money off the table, money management, that's what we did. We did it this morning again, uh, just lightening up in some areas, even the areas I love. And we're looking at will there be a rotation from sectors that have been beaten up but are really good sectors at this particular point for new investment? Or is everything going to come down? Or... Am I going to be totally pleasantly surprised by the, the 34,000 and the Dow becoming the home for the next two, three weeks as the market stays in the 34,000s? I'm just being kind of cautious. Have a wonderful day. Stay tuned. You've got Tommy O'Brien coming up next. But if you're listening to the 10 o'clock time frame, it'll be Steve Rose. Have a wonderful day. Check out my opening call, Daily Newsletter. Thank you. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This is TFNN, the Tiger Financial.